Charlotte Corder hailed from Normandy, where her family was a part of minor nobility. Despite her slightly blue blood, she supported the revolution and backed the Gironds, a group of moderate Republicans who advocated a constitutional government. She believed their reasoned approach would enable France to avoid all-out civil war and save the country from ruin. The rise of the violent and radical Montagnard alarmed Corder. Jean-Paul Marais was particularly influential and powerful during the infamous Reign of Terror, as he could use his newspaper, L'Ami de Pupil, the Friend of the People, to spread the Jacobian viewpoint. In a nutshell, they believed the only way to keep the revolution safe from civil war and foreign interference was by executing anyone who dared to speak against it. A popular movement that began as a cry for liberty had become the worst kind of tyranny. It took two attempts, but Corder finally gained entry to Marais' home on the evening of July 13, 1793, by claiming to have knowledge of a Girondist uprising. She made her way to Marais' inner sanctum with a concealed kitchen knife with a six-inch blade. By this stage of his life, Marais was conducting most of his business from his bathtub. This was likely due to a debilitating skin disorder that he might have picked up from hiding from his enemies in Paris sewers. Whatever the case, he spent significant time every day soaking in medicinal herbs and seeking relief from the relentless discomfort and itching. As promised, Charlotte gave Marais a list of people involved with the Girondist cause. After imparting this information, she plunged her knife deep into his chest, slicing through his lung, aorta, and left ventricle, and rendering the information useless. Marais died almost instantly. Cora then sat and awaited her eventual arrest. At her trial, she was insistent that she committed her crime alone and that I killed one man to save a hundred thousand. No doubt alluding to Maximilien Robespierre's justification for the execution of King Louis XVI. Charlotte went to the guillotine a mere four days after she killed Jean-Paul Marais. In the immediate aftermath of the event, Marais was regarded as a martyr for France. He was lauded as a hero and he was buried at the Pantheon. Marais and everything he stood for, it was idealized and championed, completely the opposite of what Charlotte Corder had hoped for. Immediately after being decapitated, a carpenter who had been hired to make repairs to the guillotine by the name of Legro picked up her head and slapped her face. He was later sentenced to three months in prison for this act, apparently cutting off her head A-OK, -okay, but slapping her head an imprisonable offense here. Corder's remains were then carelessly tossed into an open grave with so many other victims of the Reign of Terror. But what goes around comes around. Many of those responsible for changing France's mostly peaceful bid for revolution into a bloodbath turns on each other and met the same grisly end at the guillotine. And now for a bonus fact. The guillotine became popular during the French Revolution as the people's avenger against their tyrants, though it was first used on the 25th of April 1792 to execute a common thief, Nicolas Pelletier. It has continued to be used as France's main method of judicial execution until the abolition of capital punishment in France in 1981. The last person executed via guillotine in France was a Tunisian immigrant named Hamida Jandobi on the 10th of September 1977. Jandobi was convicted of torturing and murdering his 21 one year old ex girlfriend Elizabeth Bosque in Marseille. So, I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos a few times a week. If you're looking for more from me, why not check out my other channel called Today I Found Out? I'm going to link to that below. And as always, thank you for watching.